The arrival of Dory has definitely caused a lot of discussions within the community, and there's a few important things that I want to address in this video. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Divine W Perfect Wonderland, an open world MMORPG inspired by the Eastern fantasy style. Now, this is actually interesting. The game's map is quite massive, and there's about 60,000 square meters that you can set off and explore, so you could say the world helps you visualize your imagination. There's also eight different character professions, but here's the twist. You can choose to play either normal or a villain class version, and each of them will have their own skills and abilities, which is pretty awesome. And with the chosen profession, you'll be able to take on some cool bosses, fighting mythical phantom beasts, learning new kung fu abilities from the east, all of this combined gives off visually pleasing battles. But besides battling, you can also go fishing or do a complete 180 and just get married instead. I mean, it's up to you how you want to play this game. And right now, there's a total pool of 1 billion diamonds ready to be given away for free, and all you have to do is just use my link in the description to pre register to the game, which will also help support my channel. Also, go and follow Divine's Facebook page for a chance to win awesome gifts, like a new iPhone 13, PS5, and more, so make sure to check out Divine W now. So you might be wondering, what exactly am I trying to prove here with this video? Well, I think that it's pretty clear by now that the majority of the community have already made up their minds about Dory, and I'm not going to try and change anyone's opinion here. However, I think it's important to acknowledge a few key things about Dory. I mean, let's be real here. Sooner or later, you will unlock a couple, maybe all of her constellations. But will it be enough to justify using her in the Abyss? Because as of now, most of the content creators, including myself, looked at Dory specifically as a C0 unit. Well, here's the thing, as a support, she's fine. But there are three main issues a lot of people have with her. First of all, the long burst cooldown means it's harder to use her in quick swap rotations. Then her electro application is questionable at best, and her own personal damage is lackluster, considering she can capitalize on the new Dendro reactions. Now, for the latter, I honestly don't take that much issue with it. I mean, I know I showcased her personal damage potential in the previous video, but with so many strong damage dealers already in the game, I just don't consider this to be a huge drawback, especially since she's a support. Anyway, so so with these few things in mind, can her constellations fix some of these issues? And if that's the case, at which constellation level is this achievable? Well, I can already tell you that the first constellation is not going to be a game changer. Sure, the skill will now fire off an additional shot, and it will also cause a reaction, so this means now her skill will always trigger two reactions, but in a nutshell, this is more or less just improving her quicken damage. Maybe if the additional shot goes after multiple enemies, then you could consider this also improving her electro application. However, here's where the big changes come next. At second constellation, now as long as the active character is connected to the lamp, one special shot will be fired off every time healing occurs, which will be a total of six attacks, or in this case, there will be a total of three electro reactions caused. This is huge. Like, I almost feel we're back again to Kujosara situation, where the skill was annoying or you could even say unusable without the second constellation, and I believe Dory shares this problem as well. You see, the whole connector thing dealing damage and applying electro is just not that that great. First of all, you need to position yourself just so that the connector deals damage to the enemy, and then, if that's not enough, there's a special burst ICD that only triggers 4 times total, or every 3 seconds. So this almost becomes borderline unusable in a lot of team comps. But with the second constellation here, now it actually fires off a shot that will be seeking out enemies, and this will cause a total of 3 reactions. In my opinion, I think this second constellation actually lets you use Dory as a decent electro applicator now, and I really think the developer should have made this constellation as a passive instead. Surely they saw from playtesters just how unreliable the connector damage is. Now, you also might be wondering, will this second constellation also allow Dory to trigger Hyper Blooms easier? Well, I did my honest work here with a couple of teams, and all I can say is that, yes, the second constellation will be able to pick up some of the Dendro cores you would not have been able to trigger previously with C0 Dory, but even then, her ability to trigger Hyper Blooms still remains unreliable, and someone like Cookie can do this job so, so much better. Still, in Quicken teams, this second constellation is going to be amazing, especially if you're not running Fischl in the team, because now, at least Dory can refresh the Quicken aura on enemies quite reliably with C2. But looking at other improvements, I will quickly skip 3rd and 5th constellations and just go straight to C4 because I found it to be pretty interesting. Dory is actually a good single target healer, and with C4, if an active character has less than 50% health, the heals will be multiplied by 1.5 times basically. So if previously with a healer build, I was able to get 9400 heals, now it can go up all the way to 15,000. That's pretty crazy if you ask me. And this time around, I also went ahead and tested her clam artifact damage, and I was able to get up 
to 27,000 damage from Bubble Pops and Superconduct teams. Obviously, the active character needs to have low health to trigger big Bubble Pops, so I think it's more like a nice bonus to have, instead of focusing on it. Although, it is important to note that the second part of C4 also provides 30% ER increase, as long as the active character burst is halfway charged. I actually like this a lot, and it only improves ER management further. Finally, in order to talk about her last constellation, I went ahead and did a lot of testing for it because, believe it or not, it is actually something that's a pretty big game changer for her. But how big? Well, let's find out. So. Let me be real with you, I really didn't expect much from C6 Dory. I honestly thought it was just going to be some kind of a joke upgrade that lets you play Dory as a damage dealer, but I was wrong. She's actually pretty good with the final constellation, provided you are building her with a specific artifact and weapon set. Basically, at C6, after using her skill, her normal attacks will be infused with Electro, and depending on her server latency, at least in my case, I'm able to achieve a full 3-hit combo before the infusion disappears. Sure, you could cancel her attacks and so on. On, but I only tested her full 3-hit combo because, believe it or not, this combo alone can cause two guaranteed reactions. But you might say, well, how is she supposed to deal electro-infused damage consistently if her infusion lasts for one combo and the skill has 9 second cooldown? Well, that's where the Thundering Fury set comes in, along with the first passive. With these two combined, if you unleash her skill and burst and deliver a full 3-hit combo, there's only going to be around 1 second downtime before she can reuse the skill again. And remember, combining her skill and normal attack combo, this leads to 4 reactions, or in this case, 4 aggravates. So if the burst is also there connected to her, that's 3 more reactions. And if you're even positioned in a way that the connector damages the enemy, that's 4 more reactions. In total, assuming if you use her with 2 skill activations before switching out, you can potentially get about 15 reactions total, which is absolutely crazy if you think about it. Now, I like to be realistic here and I would just disregard the connector reactions. So in my case, it's usually about 11 to 12 reactions Dory will be able to cause before switching out and with a full damage dealer build, she actually pushes out some decent numbers. Like, don't get me wrong, she is still nowhere close in terms of Kaching or facial damage, but she is actually a decent damage dealer at C6, especially if you have either a fully refined Rain Slasher or even better, a fully refined Serpent Spine, which I've been using it in these showcases. So, in Quicken teams with Fischl, Dendro Traveler and Animal Unit like Kazuha, I actually think C6 Dory works really well, especially if you have trouble surviving in the Abyss, since Dory will also provide around 4 to 7,000 heals per each tick, depending if her C4 gets triggered. Now, outside of Quicken teams, I also tried out a team that's very similar to Razor's, where I utilized a full Elemental Mastery Thundering Fury set, but it quickly became clear that unlike Razor, who deals Electro damage from his burst along with his normal attacks, Dory's attacks are infused with Electro, so she cannot gain Bennett's C6 Pyro Infusion, and in this case, she won't trigger overloads on the enemies, and even then, it's just not as comfortable to use her as with Razor in this specific team. So I would say, as of now, her C6 is best utilized in Quicken teams, when she is equipped with Thundering Fury Force set and either Serpent Spine or Rain Slasher. Just keep in mind since I couldn't find a team where you can put a shield on her, she will be losing at least one or two Serpent Spine stacks from incoming enemy attacks especially because her normal attack animations are so clunky. But you could try experimenting with some animation cancelling, I guess. Overall, I kind of feel Hoyerverse did us dirty. It's pretty clear Dory's second constellation is a massive improvement to her lackluster Electro application, just because it turns the burst into a more consistent way you can trigger the reactions with, so things like refreshing Quicken on enemies actually becomes achievable only with her C2, unless you're really good at positioning the lamp's connector. Her C4 is also pretty decent, although I think the energy part is more important than healing here, since it will actually help out her teammates who are still missing a lot of energy. However, the biggest surprise here was definitely the final constellation. Allowing players to actually use Dory as a sort of a driver or sub damage dealer is pretty awesome in Quicken teams. But it is the final constellation, so it can take a day or it could take a couple of years before you unlock it, depending on how lucky or committed you are. Thankfully, this constellation alone does not turn her into an insane damage dealer, even if she does cause a lot of reactions. So I would think of this upgrade as a unique playstyle option, instead of a mandatory constellation. Still, if we go back to the list of problems I mentioned about 
with Dory at the beginning of the video, I believe that only two of them get sort of fixed with constellations, but the downtime from her burst still remains pretty long. Since it has a 20 second cooldown and in a lot of quick swap or quicken teams, it will still be hard to utilize her burst in these rotations. However, at the end of the day, as long as you get her a second constellation, she becomes a better unit for utility. And at C6, you can use her in fun but not too strong team comps as a damage dealer. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel, and I'd appreciate if you could check out today's sponsor by using my link and help support my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.